Now, one of the major challenges with educational technology or edtech is that there's no strong theoretical grounding of the field. Part of this is because it is an applied field. Educational technology or technology itself is applied to other things such as medicine or architecture or engineering or science. Technology is very rarely applied to itself. So the nature of the field itself is subdivided into all other disciplines and fields. It's also the problem with educational technology then as part of that is that it is also um, applied to other areas of education. Um, apart from these few courses, we rarely have a course on educational technology. It may be um, using a particular technology in science, say um, calculators, graphing calculators, and exploring that technology within the context of examining concepts in science. But it's relatively rare to have educational technology um, existing on its own. It's applied in various contexts. And this has the difficulty of definition. While most areas of, of social science and sciences are fairly tightly defined, educational technology is notoriously poorly defined. Um, and technology itself is notoriously poorly defined because it is again coupled with its use in other areas. So one area that we can look at in terms of educational technologies and technologies is around our decisions um, involved with various aspects of defining the, the field of technology or technologies education. So there's always going to be values associated with our definitions based upon who's defining it. Um, if you were to define educational technologies or technology, you would have various things that you associate with technology that you would include in that definition. While someone else who has had other experiences may include other elements that they feel are more important or less important. Technology by its nature is generally optimistic. We don't normally have technologies designed to fail. So technologies exist to solve problems, to do things. So by their inherent nature, they are very optimistic. Now this can be problematic in that they can sometimes neglect the impact that they have um, because of that optimistic framing. So for example, um, putting up a whole lot of um, rockets into space to spread aluminium foil to reduce the sunlight hitting the earth and reduce the impact of um, global warming. Nice, strong, positive educational framework, but putting up a whole lot of aluminium um, sheets into space may have a lot of other possible consequences that we may not necessarily consider not the least our aesthetics of seeing all of these different huge shapes in the sky, um, but they might fall to the ground, they might impact satellites. There could be a whole range of things that could go wrong with that. That because we're framing technology around a positive, we don't necessarily explore in depth. Now, the other aspect of technology is around its institutionalization where we start sort of framing the use of technology as something that has to happen rather than could happen because everyone is using technology for that purpose or it's become the norm, um, but we're not necessarily looking at it critically as to whether or not it is the best thing to have happened. Um, and this can be very problematic, particularly when the driving forces are commercial imperatives where there is profit to be made by things happening. And um, that has a strong influence then over ensuring that these things do happen. And finally, there are the cultural and um, values 
of the developers of the technology. And we see this in particular when we look at the third world, where technology is being applied into the third world, where it was developed for a first world um, framework. Um, in terms of affordability, in the West, it may be okay to have a phone, a mobile phone that costs over $1,000. In other parts of the world, that may be quite inappropriate. So there can be a whole range of different framings based upon the cultural values and perspectives of the developers of the technology that is imposed upon the users of the technology, um, which can have detrimental effects. So part of this is around coming up with what's called a technology of educational technologies. So basically trying to frame an emphasis on the thought processes and the products. Um, so we need to be seeing technology as a thing that enhances humanity, that enhances what we do, that makes our contribution greater rather than technology that potentially replaces or does things autonomously without the contribution of humans. There's also the emphasis in technology on processes. Um, now these can be adaptive and systematic and uh, transforming, but they should have a human purpose. Sometimes we see technology improving things for technology's sake, um, and in particular around commercial imperatives. Say making a, uh, a warehouse more efficient by having robots moving around and re uh, replacing human workers in um, managing the stock in that workshop. Now, yes, that does improve the commercial outcomes, but it has a detrimental effect upon the human workers immediately, but it also might have other detrimental effects upon society as a result. And there should then be a focus on three elements of environmental, social and intellectual influences. Does the technology make a contribution to the general environment, to the general society, and to the general intellectual development of humanity. These are things that we aim to have all companies contribute to society. But sometimes we neglect that when we focus on technology. Okay, so there's some things to think about in terms of um, the sociological elements of technology. And the reading will unpack that in more detail. But Coming into educational technologies, one of the key challenges is around defining what we mean by educational technology. Now, throughout this course, you've been exploring a whole range of educational technologies, um, but they're all very different. They have different affordances, different capabilities, different approaches. And we've only covered a small fraction of the many educational technologies that exist. So it highlights the challenge of trying to define what we mean by educational technology. So there are some more generic sort of higher order categorizations that we can utilize, such as it centers on a physical product that is developed to assist the teaching and learning process. So there's something that does something that improves teaching and learning. Um, it has a process and there's a development, designing and evaluating um, mechanism that can be applied to that process to improve the process. And finally, there are a range of philosophical and holistic orientations around the types of problems that the educational technology can solve and how it's been framed to solve those problems. And by looking at as many of different facets of that as possible, we can make it more generalizable so that it can be useful in a whole range of other contexts. So if the technology, educational technology is going to be used in a, um, say, kindergarten class, how is that different to it being used in a university class? How is it different to being used in a third world country versus a third world, a first world country? 
So these are things that can be considered in framing the educational technology definition of what we're exploring. Now, the approach that can accommodate all of this is known as systems um, definitions. When we look at the educational technology as a complex system, rather than individual elements, and how that system interacts with itself and with other systems, allows us to get around many of the limitations just discussed. So the fact that education, the fact that any technology is so interwoven with other disciplines and fields becomes a strength when we look at it from a systems perspective. Of course, we look at how that particular system contributes and involves the use of educational technology compared to another um, system, say architecture, and how it utilizes technology versus policing and how it utilizes technology. There'll be some commonalities, but some differences. And a systems thinking approach allows us to explore the different interrelationships and complexities of those systems. So look at the paper and we'll unpack that, you'll unpack that uh, prior to the tutorial. And we'll discuss that in the tutorial and explore what this concept of systems approach to educational technology allows us to get a, around some of the definitional and uh, conceptual problems of treating technologies and educational technology in particular in a more specific way. And we'll discuss that in the tutorial.